Hi, and welcome to our video for Chapter 3, Section 2 on the International System of Units, also known as SI. Okay, so when you're making measurements, all measurements depend on units. Like I've said, if you measure something out to 2.1 and don't put anything after it, it is wrong because it is meaningless without units. I don't know if it was 2.1 centimeters, millimeters, milliliters, etc. Okay, so the international system of units is, and pardon my French, because uh, I'm terrible, Le Systeme International de Unites, I guess, but it's abbreviated as SI, like I said on the last page. Right, so the basic units are in reference table D of your reference tables. The basic unit of length is the meter, and it's abbreviated with that small m. The basic unit of mass, right, mass is the amount of matter in an object, is the gram, which is the small g. Temperature, we use the Kelvin which is just a capital K. Sometimes we will also use degrees Celsius, okay, which is C-E-L-S-I-U-S. -S. Note how degrees Celsius has a little degree sign, whereas Kelvins do not. We'll measure time in seconds with a lowercase s. And something that should be brand new to you guys this year, or probably is brand new to most of you, it's when we deal with the amount of a substance, we're going to use something called the mole. We're going to learn more about that in a couple of chapters, but that's abbreviated M-O-L. All right, so we have prefixes. Once again, these should be review from earlier science classes and the like, and they're also listed in reference table C. Okay, so first one is kilo which is with a K, which is 10 to the third, or a thousand. So a thousand meters would be a kilo meter, kilometer. Deci, don't use that that much, but since it's on the reference table, I'll set it here. Deci would be one tenth of something, 10 to the minus one. So one tenth of a meter would be a decimeter. Centi, right? I'll say to people frequently, how many cents are in a dollar? Let's say a hundred. That means there are 100 centimeters in one meter. And centimeter is one one hundredth. Milli is one one thousandth. There are one thousand millimeters in one meter. Micro is ten to the minus sixth. Probably won't use that much this year, but that would be one, two, three. There are one million microliters in one liter. Nano is 10 to the minus 9th, and pico is 10 to the minus 12th. They're all in your reference table, so you need to know how to use them. You'll memorize them as you use them, but you don't have to sit and memorize them, so you'll kind of rememberize them. Okay, so in our basic units, unit of length, the meter is the base unit. Okay, so everything is based off of that. The common ones we'll use other than meter are kilometer and centimeter. And it's measured with some type of ruler, tape measure, or the like. Kilometer is about 0 0.6 of a mile. A centimeter, if you look at your fingernail side to side right so if here's your finger see how bad i am at drawing all right 
and there's the nail. That is about a centimeter, not the actual length of your nail if you have some crazy long nails. Okay, so measuring volume, the base unit is the liter. And it was developed based on the cubic centimeter. So if you take a cubic centimeter, which is a centimeter, centimeter, on all size, but a cube. Right? So if this was a centimeter on all sides, the amount of space in here or amount of stuff you could fit in there would be equal to one milliliter. So a thousand of those becomes a liter. Okay. So one liter is about a quart. So there are about four liters in a gallon. We're not really going to use gallons much, but if you think of a gallon of milk, that's around four liters. And when you have to measure volume, you'll use for liquids, we'll usually use a graduated cylinder. We could also use a pipette, a burette, or a volumetric flask. A volumetric flask is a flask that's kind of like this, round on the bottom here, and there'll be a line here. And it would say 1,000 milliliters. So if you fill it up precisely to that line, it's 1,000 milliliters. All right. For mass, the gram is the base unit. Your textbook says the kilogram is the base unit, but I don't like using a modified thing with one of the prefixes as a base. So think of the gram as the base unit, especially in chemistry, because we'll be working more with grams than with kilograms of stuff. A large paper clip is about a gram. When you guys did the measurement activity a little while back, I gave you small paper clips. That's why they were about half a gram. But a larger paper clip is about a gram. The relationship between the kilogram and pounds is one kilogram is about 2.2 pounds. All right, so there are a couple other units that you're going to have to know. First one being temperature. Okay, and we've talked about before, the two most common you're going to need are Kelvin and Celsius. Kelvin is the absolute temperature scale, where we'll talk later in the year where zero Kelvin is equal to absolute zero, meaning you can't get any colder than that. So there's never any negative degrees in Kelvin, which is why it ends up getting used for calculations. Uh, occasionally, when it's talking about a difference in temperature, we'll use Celsius, and Celsius is based on zero degrees Celsius being the freezing point of water and 100 degrees Celsius being the boiling point. And since there's 100 different degrees in that scale, it was called, became called centigrade. If you ever heard somebody say, it's, you know, 25 degrees centigrade, it's the same exact thing as saying 25 degrees Celsius. And this, most of you did fairly well on our practice measurement lab where you have to calculate the temperature in an armpit and Kelvins is equal to degrees Celsius plus 273. So we're talking about the freezing point of water. You would get zero degrees Celsius plus 273 is equal to 273 Kelvins. All right, and last but not least, energy. The base unit in SI for energy is the joule. And it's related to the calorie. When you think of calories in your food, Right, those are actually kilocalories, but it's energy, the amount of energy you're going to get out of your food. One calorie is the energy required to raise one gram of water, one degree Celsius. So it's a heat energy. And joules, one joule is equal to 0 0.2390 calories. One calorie is equal to 4.184 joules. And that's in reference B, in reference table B of your reference table, sort of. All right, if you need to go back and review anything, by all means, feel free to do so, and I'll see you guys in school.